Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Britt Tally Daniel, MD, and I'm a neurologist and a headache doctor. And today I'm talking about <clears throat> pretty unusual migraine disorder called retinal migraine. Well, the anatomy. The retina is in the back part of the eye where there are blood vessels and the retinal tissue, which contains light sensitive rods and cones the central circular spot where the optic nerve attaches, and the fovea, which is a spot for fine central vision, such as needed for reading newsprint. If you learn how to use an ophthalmoscope, just a little light, you look in the back of the eye, you'll see a retinal reflex, which is red, because the back of the eye looks red. It's full of blood vessels. Migraine is a neurologic, genetic, medical problem affecting 12% of the world's population, 25% of women and 6% of men have migraine, and migraine is one of the top 10 disabling conditions known to man. Uh, A joke in medical school is that painful conditions are childbirth, kidney stone, and migraine headache. A migraine headache attack lasts 4 to 72 hours. They are moderate to severe in intensity, may be one-sided or throbbing, and associated with sensitivity to light and sound. Most patients who are suffering a migraine attack are in bed and are disabled for working or being up. So the question is, what is retinal migraine? The International Classification of Headache Disorders third version describes retinal migraine as consisting of repeated attacks of monocular visual disturbance which may come with scintillations, scotomas, or blindness, and migraine headache. The ICDH-3 diagnostic criteria for retinal migraine are A, at least two attacks fulfilling criteria B and C. B is aura, consisting of fully reversible, monocular, positive, and or negative visual phenomena, such as scintillation, scotoma, or blindness, confirmed during an attack by either or both of the following. Number one, clinical visual field examination by a doctor or technician. Number two, the patient's drawing made after clear instruction of a monocular field defect. Then C is at least two of the following three characteristics. The aura spreads gradually over five minutes. Aura symptoms last from five to 60 minutes. The aura is accompanied or followed within 60 minutes by a headache. And the whole event is not better accounted for by another headache diagnosis. And other causes of what's called amaurosis fugax have been excluded. Amaurosis fugax in Latin means fleeting blindness. It's usually found with an embolus or small piece of cholesterol or blood clot from the carotid artery that's gone into the retina. Comments. Now, some patients who complain of monocular visual disturbance in fact, have hemanopia, which is visual loss in the same part of both the right and the left eye, such as the right eye would have a nasal loss closest to the nose, and the left eye would have a temporal loss closest to the ear side. Some cases without headache have been reported as retinal migraine, but migraine is underlying etiology cannot be ascertained in those cases. Retinal migraine is an extremely rare cause of transient monocular visual loss. Cases of permanent monocular visual loss associated with migraine have been described very rarely. Appropriate investigations are required to exclude other causes of transient monocular blindness. This is a migraine visual aura occurring just in one eye, or in what may be referred to as a monocular distribution, that means one eye, rather than the usual bilateral homonymous pattern, which is in both eyes. According to the theory of Liao, a spreading wave of electrical depolarization moving across one side of the occipital brain is what causes the migraine with our patient to see the scintillating zigzag pattern in both halves of the visual fields. In a homonymous pattern, the carefully observant and carefully instructed patient may notice the visual aura in, for example, the right halves of both eyes. This, again, would compromise the right eye nasal field and the left eye temporal field. 
Then, the visual aura should be followed by a typical migraine without aura headache. Every neurologist knows that patients best note the images in their dominant field. In the example given here, the dominant field would be the right eye. And only on close questioning may the patient be able to admit seeing the spectral image in the non-dominant field. In the example given, the non-dominant field would be an image in the right part of the left eye. Sometimes the patient may be asked if they saw the image with both eyes closed, and this memory may help them declare the occurrence of the non-dominant field. Examiners who see patients during the attack commonly have the patient do the alternate eye covering test to differentiate a homonymous from a monocular pattern. Although Spearings has stated that he never found this test to be helpful. If a properly educated patient can draw what they saw and the image is just in one eye and followed by a migraine headache, then this is what is termed retinal migraine. Images in just one eye bring out the possibility of some other medical problem causing <clears throat> the symptoms other than migraine. So the patient needs a neurologic workup. We have to exclude possible embolic sources, that means a blood clot, followed by diagnostic testing with an EKG, echocardiogram, carotid duplex scanning, MRI scanning, CAT scan or MRI, MRI brain scan, and angiography. To diagnose retinal migraine, it's helpful to have an ophthalmologic exam with an ophthalmoscope during an attack, which may show decreased blood flow to the eye. In this case, the ophthalmologist may be able to make a confident diagnosis of retinal migraine. However, attacks are usually brief, and it's more likely the exam, eye exam will be normal and the patient be diagnosed based on a past history account of his previous symptoms. So it's very rare for the doctor to see the patient at the time they're having the attack. There are common other terms used to describe retinal migraine. And it's most prop appropriately called retinal migraine, but it may also may be referred to as anterior visual pathway migraine, monocular migraine, ocular migraine, retinal vasospasm, transient monocular visual loss, or retinal spreading depression. The phrase retinal migraine is commonly mislabeled as ocular migraine, but the term Ocular migraine is not mentioned in ICDH3. So, what kind of visual images are patients seeing here? A positive visual image is something that's outside the normal experience of your vision. So, you'll, you'll see flashing rays of light, a zigzag lightning pattern, maybe bright colored streaks or halos or diagonal lines. A negative visual loss means the vision is taken away. This could include blurring or blank areas are blank dots or spots in the field of vision, and those are called scotoma. The most common patient population that has retinal migraine are women in their 20s and 30s who have had previous migraine with aura. The differential diagnosis of this concern is amaurosis fugex from embolic carotid disease, or optic neuropathy, vasculitis, a hypercoagulable state, illicit drug use, the rheumatologic disorders. Possible aggravating features of retinal migraine are stress, smoking, high blood pressure, oral contraceptive pill taking, exercise, bending over, high altitude, <clears throat> dehydration, low blood sugar, excessive heat. The treatment of uh, retinal migraine, well, there's currently insufficient clinical information to support recommendations for preventative or acute treatment for this entity. Therapy with acute attack of retinal migraine should not include tryptans or ergotamine drugs because of their vasoconstrictive properties. Oral contraceptive pills should not be used or stopped. All patients should be advised to stop smoking. Prophylactic, me prophylactic medications that have been tried with anecdotal be benefit include calcium channel blockers, antidepressants like amitriptyline or triptyline, propranolol, valproic acid, or topiramate. There's currently no data on the use of the new GPENT acute therapy drugs that came out in uh, March of 2020 or of previously used CGRP preventive drugs such as Amavig 
a gel V or M. gallati for treatment of retinal migraine. We just don't have any data. A final note is patients should be given aspirin because of its antiplatelet activity. The prognosis. Although retinal migraine is considered a benign condition, very rarely permanent symptoms can persist after the acute attack. So a case report. I have it from Dr. Evans and Grossberg writing in the Headache Journal in 2008 on an article entitled Expert Opinion, Retinal Migraine, Migraine Associated with Monocular Visual Symptoms. They presented a case and they discussed uh, the pathophysiology workup and treatment. Their case summary follows. This 25-year-old man reports a 12-year history of similar headaches occurring about one or two times monthly. He develops a left-right temple throbbing, which is mild at first and then later becomes 10 to 10, associated with nausea, vomiting, light, and noise sensitivity. About 30 minutes after the onset of all the headaches, he develops sudden total darkness where he cannot see in the eye contralateral to the headache lasting about four hours. Contralateral means here if a headache's right, the vision loss is left. The headache is severe for about five hours and then mild for 24 to 36 hours. Aspirin or acetaminophen is of mild help. He tries to go to bed. He had never seen a physician with headaches before. His past medical history was negative. There was no family history of migraine. His neurologic exam was normal. Evans and Grossberg stated, The most likely cause of recurrent stereotypical episodes of transient monocular vision loss and associated with headache is retinal migraine. Secondary causes of transient monocular vision, vision loss are less likely to be found in cases that have been recurring for a long period of time. Evans and Grossberg felt that the true occurrence of retinal migraine was unknown, but it was a rare entity. The type of visual disturbance noted may be positive and or negative visual disturbances within one eye associated with migraine headache. Regarding pathophysiology, Evans and Grossberg said, the underlying pathophysiology of retinal migraine remains largely unknown. In some cases, vasospasm of the retinal or ciliary artery circulation may have caused retinal or optic nerve ischemia means lack of blood. This may explain the amaurosis, which means blindness, and rare fundoscopic findings during acute attack of retinal migraine. An alternative theory is spreading depression of retinal neurons, a phenomenon that has been demonstrated in the Czech retina. Similarly, it's possible that those, those rare cases with prolonged monocular defects associated with migraine headaches could have a mechanism similar to that seen in the cerebral cortex of migraines who have persistent R without infarction, another rare migraine syndrome. Evans and Grossberg stressed that prolonged and permanent monocular visual loss was more common in retinal migraine than in cases of prolonged aura or meagerness infarction in patients with conventional migraine. Thus, retinal migraine carries a worse prognosis a situation provoking consideration of pharmacological treatment. I'm going to discuss another case. This one written by Dr. Grossberg alone. He's a persistent professor of neurology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, director of the inpatient headache program at Mount Fiore Headache Center in the Bronx, New York. His case was a 42-year-old woman with migraine who was referred by her eye doctor to a headache clinic because she was having recurrent episodes of visual loss in one eye. Her migraine headaches were severe, pulsating, and left-sided. Associated features included nausea, vomiting, and increased sensitivity to lights, sounds, and odors. Her headaches occurred approximately six times monthly and lasted 24 to 72 hours. One-third of her headaches began with transient spells of visual loss in the left eye, consisting of black spots and flashing lights. The visual phenomena always began in the outer edge of the woman's left eye and expanded to engulf the entire eye within a few minutes, alternately covering each eye during an attack and comparing their views confirmed that the visual disturbance was confined just to the left eye. Complete visual loss in the left eye lasted for five minutes and fully resolved and was followed immediately by a migraine headache. The woman's general medical and neurological examinations were normal, as were repeated eye exams by several ophthalmologists. 
Other tests, which included an MRI of the brain, ultrasound examination of the carotid arteries, echocardiography, and extensive blood testing were within normal limits. The patient was treated with a gradually escalated dose of nortriptyline, a medication used for headache prevention. The episodes of visual loss completely stopped, and the woman experienced a significant reduction in headaches down to one per month. Dr. Grossberg discussed this article. The features in this case suggest a diagnosis of retinal migraine, as long as other causes of visual loss involving one eye are excluded. Other terms that have been used for this condition include ophthalmic migraine, ocular migraine, and anterior visual pathway migraine. Retinal migraine is thought to be a rare entity, but its true occurrence is unknown. Retinal migraine is most common in women with a history of migraine with aura who are in their 20s and 30s. It's characterized by episodes of fully reversible positive and or negative visual disturbances within one eye associated with migraine headache. Typical descriptions of positive visual phenomena including flashing, light, zigzag, and that sort of thing. The visual disturbance often occurs on the same side as migraine headache. It may proceed, accompany, or rarely follow it. The duration of visual symptoms may be as short as a few sections, but usually lasts many minutes to one hour. More rarely, prolonged but fully reversible visual loss in one eye may occur, sometimes lasting hours, days, or even weeks. And the diagnostic workup should include a careful medical and ophthalmological examination. It's often difficult to distinguish between a visual aura that affects the right or left half of a person's visual field in both eyes and the loss of vision in one eye. To make this distinction, one must alternately cover each eye and compare the views. If visual loss in one eye is confirmed, causes of visual loss other than migraine must first be excluded. Blood work and imaging studies of the heart, brain, eyes, and blood vessels in the neck are recommended. Once retinal migraine is suspected, the patient should be referred to an ophthalmologist and a neurologist who specializes in treatment of headache. Although Retinal migraine has usually been viewed as a benign condition. It appears that partial or complete permanent visual loss of one eye may occur. No specific factor has been identified to account for this occurrence. Therefore, preventive drug therapy for migraine seems prudent, even if attacks are infrequent. Now, in this article on my webpage at drmigraine.com, I have a list of different bibliography of other uh, writers on this currents of retinal migraine you may want to look at. But for now, that's all I have to say about retinal migraine. Uh, God bless all you folks who have migraine. I hope you don't have this condition. Please click subscribe so we can keep in touch with each other. And I'll see you again on another talk. Bye-bye.